Good morning, virtual learners, and welcome to another episode of an exciting learning engagement where we learn the structure of English language while we are enjoying. Because learning English is fun. This is Valenzuela Live English 7. We are now on the third week of the second quarter, and I hope that by now, you have well adjusted to the new normal of education as you are continuously guided by your parents and teachers. For today, we will be using the learning material prepared by Ms. Marisa D. Piquero, Master Teacher 1 from Valenzuela National High School. Some reminders. Make sure you have your pen, paper, and mojo with you. And please do write down important details along our learning journey, which will focus on this most essential learning competency. Use simple past tense and past perfect tense in various contexts. Specifically, we will give the correct form of verbs to complete a sentence. Use phrases, clauses, and sentences appropriately and meaningfully. Compose a personal journal expressing your past experiences. Mutia will be joining us again. Are you ready to learn and relearn? Well, if yes, kindly hit the hearty action at the bottom of your screen. Thank you so much, learners. This morning, we will be joined by a guest who is very dear to me because of her kindness, which also makes her well-loved by her grandchildren. Learners, I want to introduce to you Nita D, a successful businesswoman and the original owner of Mutia. Morning, Nita D. And today, she will be sharing her personal journal about her experiences when she was still a student in order to inspire us. Let's listen to her and write down important details. Hello, learners. How are you? I know you are encountering many difficulties in the new normal of education. But do you know that you are very blessed even though you are facing challenges right now? Why? Let me share to you my personal journal about my experiences when I was a student. I was raised in a poor family with seven siblings. Before I had finished my study, I went through many hardships. I spent my morning in the market to help my mother sell rags while my father had left the house to farm before the sun rose. Going to school, I walk for two hours wearing only slippers. Our classroom was small made of old woods and worn out nipa roof. Also, we had no books to read so we needed to copy the entire lesson in our notebook. And because I had taken responsibility of helping my mother, usually my classmates had already done many activities by the time I arrived to school. Studying had been very difficult for me because of poverty and lack of necessary support in school. So, learners, do you now know why you are blessed? It's because no matter what the situation is, you have the support not only from your parents but also from your teachers. Accordingly, you must give your best in studying just like what your teachers are doing for you. I hope I have inspired you. Thank you so much, Mita D, for sharing your story. Indeed, learners, you are truly blessed that you don't have to experience the same difficulties Mita D had. And indeed, you are provided with all the necessary support for your education by your parents, your school, and moreover, your community. So you should be thankful. So, learners, were you inspired? If yes, kindly click the carry action in your screen. Thank you so much, learners. 
Now, Matia would like to find out how much do you remember about the simple past tense and past perfect tense. And this is your task one entitled Smile or Wink at Me. Take a look at the underlined verbs from Mita D's journal and identify the tense of the verb. You may comment a smiling emoji if it is in the simple past tense and a winking emoji if it is in the past perfect tense. Start! Number one, before I had finished my study, I went through many hardships. What do you think is the answer? We have there had finished. What do you think is the four, is the tense of the verb? Comment now your emoji. The answer? Very good. Now let's have the second underlined verb, went. You may now comment your emoji. The answer? Very good. It's in the simple past tense. Let's now have the second sentence. Spent my morning in the market to help my mother sell rags. So we have there the underlined verb, spent. Comment now your emoji. And the answer? Very good. It's a smiling emoji. Next, number three. My father had left the house farm before the sun rose. So we have two underlined verb here. We have had left. So what do you think is the text of this verb? Your emoji, please, learners. Okay, very good. It's a winking emoji because it's a past perfect tense. Let's now have the second underlined verb. Okay, let's now proceed to number four. We needed to copy the entire lesson in our notebook. So the underlined verb here is needed. What do you think is the correct emoji? It is very good, a smiling emoji because it's in the simple past tense. Let's now have number five. Studying had been very difficult for me. And we have the underlined verb, which is had been. So what would be the correct emoji? It's a winking emoji. Very good. Because it's in the past perfect tense. Now, Mutia. Okay. What can you say about our learners? They are awesome indeed. Good job, learners. Now, here is the summary of your answer. And take a look at them and observe. Now, as you can see, verbs based on your answer have different forms called tenses. Tense shows when an action happened. When you recall that the action that happened in the past, you will use the simple past tense. The simple past tense is used to describe an action or condition that started and completed in the past. Just like the underlined verbs in the sentences from Mita D's journal. I went to many hardships, so we have your went. I spent my morning in the market to help my mother sell rags, so we have your spent. And we have the sun rose, so we have the verb rose. And the last sentence, we needed to copy the entire lesson in our note. So we have there the simple past tense, needed. Notice that past tense, can be formed in several ways. 
We form the simple past tense of regular verbs by adding ed, just like the verbs in the sentence we needed to copy the entire lesson in our notebook. That's an example. Needed is an example of a regular verb. From the base form of the verb, need, we added ed to make it simple, past tense. Now, for better understanding of the specific rules of forming the simple past tense of regular verbs, here are some rules to follow. Number one, most verbs or most regular verbs use ed to form their simple past tense. Just like the verbs walk, when you add ed, it becomes walked. Wish, it becomes wished. And jump, it becomes jumped. Rule number two. For verbs ending in just... For verbs ending in E with the vowel E, you just add D. Just like the verbs decided, move, and recite. Rule number three. Verbs ending with a consonant Y, to make it in the simple past tense, we change Y to I and add E. Just like the verbs study, which becomes studied, carry, which becomes carried, deny, which becomes denied in the simple past tense. And rule number four. Verbs ending with a single vowel and consonant double the first consonant and add ed to make it simple past tense. Just like the verbs pop, which becomes stopped, as you can see, it ends with o and p, a vowel and a consonant, so we double the consonant p and add ed. And another example is the verb plan, which becomes planned, and pop, which becomes popped. Now, let's try to answer your second task entitled, Recalling My Past. Mutya, kindly show them what to do. Complete the sentences in the journal below. By giving the correct simple past tense of the regular verb in the parenthesis, you may comment your answer or you may write it on a piece of paper. Here is your task. Last Christmas was different from how our family used to celebrate it yearly. We blank of having family get together out of town, but since social gathering was not allowed, my father blanked to have a simple dinner in our house. So my mother just blanked few dishes while me and my siblings blanked to design the table. The pandemic blanked us from throwing a big party, but I'm glad that our family was still able to celebrate. Let's now check if your answers are correct. So let's now have number one. The verb is plan. So the simple past tense will be plan. Number two. The verb is decide. So it becomes decided. Number three. We have the verb cook. Which becomes cooked plus ed in the simple past tense. And number four. We have the verb try, which becomes tried for the simple past tense. Number five, we have the verb stop, which becomes stopped for the simple past tense. Did you get all correct answers, learners? Very good. Now, on the other hand, irregular verbs do not follow any rule or pattern in 
making or transforming their simple past tense. Now, observe how the following verbs or underlined words from Ita this journal form their simple past tense. Observe, I went through many hardships. So the base form is go, which is an irregular verb, and when we change it to past tense, it becomes went. The second one, I spent my morning in the market to help my mother sell rags. So we have there the verb spent, which has the base form spend, and changes to spent in the simple past tense. And then the last example, the sun rose. So we have there the base form rise, and we change it to rose for the simple past tense. Now, some irregular verbs change spelling to form simple past tense, just like the given verbs a while ago. Now, some have the same base form of informing their simple past tense. For example, we have read, which becomes read in the simple past tense, cut, same spelling cut, hit, hit in the simple past tense, hurt, which has the same spelling when we change it to simple past tense. So, question learner. In what way do we know how an irregular verb will change in the past tense? Well, the only way to know how an irregular verb will change in the past tense is by knowing all the important verbs. To begin with, there are three most important irregular verbs. We have be, have, and do. Now, look at the chart and try to observe. The simple past form of be, which is on the second column, differs or depends on the subject. So on the first column, we have here pronouns, which could be the possible subject of your sentence. Now, if your subject are the pronoun I, he, she, or it, then you will use the past tense of the verb be, was. Now, if your subject are the pronouns you, we, and they, you use the past tense or the simple past tense of be, which is were. Okay? Now, for have, the past tense would be had, whether your subject is singular or plural. Same with the verb do, which is the past tense would be, would be did, whether your subject is singular or plural. Next, number two. Irregular verbs that fall in true, uh, into three main categories. So we have these three categories for irregular verbs. The first category are verbs which don't change the spelling. So just like the example earlier, we have cut, hit, or fit. So these are verbs that do not change spelling when we form their simple past tense. Category letter B. Verbs which change their vowel. So just like the examples given, get. So from the vowel E, it will change to O and form its past tense got. Sit, which becomes sat. Drink, which becomes drank. And then category C, the last category for irregular verbs, are verbs which change completely for the entire spelling. So, for example, we have the verb catch, which becomes caught in the past tense. We have bring, which becomes brought. We have teach, which becomes taught in the simple past tense. 
if you would notice, this verb changes the entire spelling when they form the simple past tense. Now, let's have your next task entitled, Verbs Complete the Past. So you're just going to complete the following sentences by changing the verbs again to past tense. Let's now have number one. Let me read it for you. B, B blank at the 3S Activity Center for the tablet distribution yesterday. So our verb here is B. What is the simple past tense of B? Take note, our subject is the pronoun B. Kindly comment your answers, learners. And the correct answer is very good word because we is in the plural form let's now have number two a strong typhoon blank the country last month so our verb here is hit what would be the simple past tense of hit kindly comment your answer learners The correct answer? Very good. Hit. Same spelling. Let's now have sentence number three. I just blank my module from school last week. Now, the verb here is get. Can you now comment the past tense of get? Complete the sentence. And the correct answer, learners? Very good, but let's now have sentence number four. The pandemic blank us many important things about life. Our verb here is teach. Now comment the past tense of teach. And the answer would be, great job learners, it's thought. Let's now have the last sentence, number five. I blank fruits and vegetables for our supply. So the verb here in number five is buy. So comment now the simple past tense of buy. The correct answer, learners? Good job. The correct answer is bought. Very good learners, nice job. Now, take note of the following time expression used in your earlier activity that is used with the simple past tense. So we have the time expression beginning with last. You may have last night, last Sunday, last week, last weekend, last year, last month. Or, you may also have the time expression that ends with ago. It could be a year ago, a month ago, a week ago, three days ago, an hour ago, or ten minutes ago. As long as it ends with ago. And then the last time expression would be yesterday. So it could be yesterday alone, or you may have yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, or yesterday so this time expressions will help you in using the simple past tense. Now, let's see the difference of past perfect tense from simple past tense. The past perfect tense is an action that took place before another action. It is formed by using the auxiliary had, do not forget that, plus the past participle of verb. Now, take a look at this sentence from Mita D's journal. Before I had finished my study, I went through many hardships. So if you would notice, we have there the underlined verb had finished, so we have there the auxiliary had, 
plus the past participle finished. Now, in making questions using the past perfect tense, it is indicated by inverting the subject and the auxiliary verb had. So, for example, we have the sentence, She had gone to the market. Now, if we change this into a question, we just replace or change the position of the subject, she, and the auxiliary verb, had. So, it becomes, where had she gone? Okay? Now, for negatives or expressing negative sentences, it is made with the word not put between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. So, for example, we have the sentence, they had not eaten for hours. So, you see there the word not between had and eaten. Okay? Now, notice that the past participle is important in forming the past perfect thing. Now, here are some verbs with their past participle to refresh your mind. Kindly look at the table. So again, it is important that you have the mastery of this past participle because you will be using them in expressing actions in the past perfect tense. So we have there awaken, been, blown, bought, left, run, and forgotten. All of these are verbs that you can use in expressing past perfect tense. Ends. Now, for more verbs with their past participle, you may just browse the internet and memorize them. Now, the time expression that you can use for past perfect tense are when, before, by the time. These are used with the clause in the simple past. We also have while, after, which is used with the clause in the past perfect. And we're almost done. But let's have your last task. Yeah? Let's now have task four. Entitled, My Perfect Past. Okay? So you're going to fill in the blank with the past perfect tense of the verb in the parenthesis. To complete the following sentences. And I will give you three minutes to answer. Check your answers, learners. Let's now have number one. The correct answer had distributed. Number two had been. Number three had put. Number four had forgotten. Number five had won. 
Okay, so, did you get a perfect score, learners? If yes, very good. But if no, it's just fine. Remember, practice makes perfect. And with your active participation in today's learning journey, you are all great learners. Great job, right, Nadia? And we are now in our question and answer portion. Again, I will give you two minutes to type your questions in the comment box. And I will be glad to answer them. You may now start and I will be back in a short while. I'm back. So our first question is from Kanumai West National High School. So the question is, can we use past perfect tense alone in a sentence without the simple uh, past tense? Of course, the answer is yes. If you have observed in our sentences earlier, uh, if the past event that occurred after where you stated the sentence is already known, then there is no problem with that. You may use the past perfect tense alone. Just like our sentence in uh, your task three, sentence number four, uh, the pandemic had taught us many important things in life. So we have there, uh, the past events as the pandemic happened are already familiar to us. So the past perfect tense alone in the sentence is just fine. So let's now have the second question from Laong Bato National High School. So the question is, what is the difference between a past tense and a past participle. Well, basically, the past tense is a tense, while the past participle is a specific verb or a special verb used in the past uh, and present perfect tense. So the past participle is not a tense. It does not indicate time. It's a form of verb that can be used on its own. That's very different. And for our last question, from, okay, Mapulang Lupa National High School. So the question is, 
How can we have the mastery of the simple past tense and past participle of irregular verbs if they do not follow any rule? Wow, that's a nice question. Well, dealing with irregular verbs is really difficult since it does not follow a certain rule in changing to past tense or to their past participle. But for you to have the mastery, all you need is uh, to read more, to search more, and to familiarize more yourself about the past tense and past participle of irregular verbs. So you may start with commonly used irregular verbs. Say, for example, the verbs break, bring, blow, and etc. So you may search the internet and memorize their past tense and past participle for you to have the mastery. Okay, I think that's our last question for today. So for additional activities, in order to practice what you have learned today, your teacher will guide you in answering the activities in your learning module for quarter two week. Okay, so your teacher will guide you on which activity you will answer, which are or in relation to our discussion for today. And... That ends our learning journey for today. I hope you learned a lot and thank you for joining me and Mutia in today's episode. Keep on studying hard. Give your best for you are part of history. So make the most out of it. Remember that. This has been Mom Michelle and see you again in our next learning journey. This is Valenzuela Live English 7.